For those of you on the audio side, thank you for tuning in for our pregame. And for those of you watching the tape delayed of this game, we do apologize that the internet is not so reliable here at the Rockville Ice Arena. But granted, if anything amazing happens in this game, you'll see it on tape. But if anything amazing happens live, you'll hear it live. And you can watch it later. So here we go. Faceoff coming up at center to start this one off between UMBC Retrievers and Miami of Ohio Red Hawks. And it's just so simple, these jerseys that Miami dons, you know, just, just white and just red lettering Miami and a little tie at the at the top. I see ah, they got the red stripe. Red stripe on the sleeves. Oh, the red stripe on the sleeves. Okay, I thought it was just like a, a little flare fashion. Long sleeve t-shirt of some sort. No, they, they look they look classy. I like it. Looks it's like very simple. Effing jerk and goal for Miami. All right. To start out. They played Covesty, their freshman last weekend. But playing right state, you can play just about whoever you want. All right, so here we go. And UMBC moving that face off along the far side. It was O'Connor that put it in deep, but not deep enough as Miami comes out through the neutral zone, clearing it down the length of the ice. No icing, as this one was deflected through, chasing it off into the corner. We do apologize for the white netting here. It's thought it'd be interesting to watch as Bloom sends it cross ice. Over to O'Connor. O'Connor off in the far corner. Up top into the slide. Here comes a shot from Durante. Oh, and a kick save. I believe Effinger did get a pat on that one. It goes off into the near corner. Inside the Red Hawks zone. Red Hawks looking to make a move out. As it is Brian Davis with it now. Up through center. Over to Keith. But Keith turns it over. UMBC will jump it in and get some fresh legs out there on the ice. And Red Hawks trapped back in their own zone. Over to McGuire. I, I beg your pardon, that's Abby. I gotta remember, I have these rosters on the wrong side, but here comes a chance now, two on one, and a shot taken by Coy. Yeah, nice save there by Drago. This one being controlled yet again by Coy. Coy back behind the goal line, off into the near corner, sending up top for a point. Chance for Berger. Berger takes it through some traffic, and it looked like it got stopped up by the defensive UMBC. Another chance and another save by Drago. This one comes all the way over to the half boards, kept active by Berger, sending it over to the far corner, far half boards, and it's Hirschman that goes in, keep it along the half boards. He's got it trapped up, and UMBC will clear this one up into the protective netting. It's Cody Silbert that'll put this one out of play. Cody Silbert from Western New York, where I am from. How about that? Says he's from Colden on one website, West Seneca on another. But other, you know, either way, he's a Western New York guy, and I'm sure he appreciates um, my hometown Sabres. Off the side of the net, that shot goes off into the far corner. Miami controlling the play right now. As it comes up with a point shot, and Drago makes a save. It's Brian Baker's shot that made it through all the traffic. Baker will glove it down at the neutral zone. Off into the near corner and around the horn, as it is. Ben Rafferty back there to pick it up. And Rafferty still with it. Coming through center. Up at the red line. Off into the far corner. He dumps it in. Effinger setting it up. And it goes off into the near corner. Red Hawks moving it out through center now. Along the near side with Frank. Frank losing control of it. Trying to force him to make a move. Was Hannock. And now it comes back to the blue line. And a hard check there. Made by Abby. But the Red Hawks can't get it deep inside the retriever zone. They'll have to retreat back into their own zone to regroup. And there are two obbies on the team. I'll clarify who's who in a few moments, but Red Hawks are deep inside retriever territory. So it goes off into the far half boards. It's Jason Obby keeping it in up into the front. And Drago had to steer that one aside. Up top near blue line is Brad Annis down low to Parizek, Parizek to the front, it's loose in a slot, Drago makes a save, and the rebound gets kicked off over to the near half boards. And working with it now is Torchia, David Torchia, the junior who we saw a number of years back. He's out there, and a shot from the point does not make its way through, and a nice clear out sent down the length of the ice by Brandon Fritz. So this one goes to the front of Effinger, but he'll get some support as this one's sent up high and into the ceiling and will not return to the ice. Fresh biscuit coming. Hoppy, what are you seeing? Well, UMBC rolling four lines to start. Uh, get everyone out there, get some fresh legs. Uh, Miami showing some jump jump in their step. Uh, don't look to have any bus legs going on. Mm -mm. Uh, maybe a little bit of a feeling out period going on for UMBC, see what they can get. Uh, we'll see how it develops later on. Dan Durante shot, missed the net, and off the backboards, Effinger will find it. Along the near side post, he'll hold on for the faceoff coming back up to his left. 
There to pick, take the face off. Matthew Bloom, another elegant city guy. Man, what is that, three or four on this team? Uh, I think we have a total of four or five. Okay. And we're gonna have a lot of them. Miami, little over the top on that face off. They'll switch out their centers and redo this one. Zach Keefe taking the face off against Bloom. One along the near corner, up top and out into the neutral zone and all the way down to Drago. Drago's gonna set it up for Devlin. Devlin putting it up along the half boards far side. Picked up and moved along by O'Connor. O'Connor trying to move around a couple of Red Hawks players, but there's a run into and out of play and into the bench. A lot of confusion there. Thought it went into some paraphernalia of a Miami player, but UMBC's bench said, no, 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 we got it, we got it. Trust us. Nothing, nothing score. 16-29 left here in the first. David Stearns with Sean Hoppy at the Rockville Ice Arena for ACHA D2 Showcase. Plenty of good talent here. As Nick Yost comes across the blue line, takes a shot, takes a shot, and eventually it goes off the pad and off into the near corner. Zeffinger made the save. Bloom chasing it in the far corner, getting roughed up. And it'll be dropped for O'Connor. O'Connor up top to the blue line. With Devlin, Devlin having trouble there at the blue line. Here comes Miami back the other way with Brian Davis on a two-on-one. Davis shoots, goes well above the cage. Off along the near face-off circle. And no possession real, really here as Miami does get a hold of it. And a long point shot from Jimmy Berger goes right in on Drago and he holds on. 15-54 left here in the first nothing nothing score. So a couple of good chances on both sides of the puck at this point. Miami with a couple of good rushes in. UMBC looking to have a little bit of a more consistent setup inside their own zone or inside the Miami zone, I beg your pardon. I guess the trick is getting it deep as a shot comes right off the faceoff. That was Thomas Coy firing one right on it, Johnny Drago, and Dregs will hold it on. Or hold on to it. For another face-off, two seconds. That's all that took. Now it comes up to the point again. Through a screen and actually gets deflected off into the near corner. Back to pick it up is Coy. As he drops it over to Bylinski. Up top to the point. Back over to Bylinski along the half board. To the slot with a shot that just goes wide off the stick of Andrew Held. Back behind the cage to Coy. Coy up front. A shot off the stick of Keith goes wide. I beg your pardon. I believe it was Carnahan that took that shot. He will be the man that picks it up at the red line and tosses it ahead. It'll be picked up through center. Coming across the line now is Bylinski taking it on Drago with a shot. They score! It was either Bylinski or Andrew Helt. I think Helt might have got that rebound up front unless it was already popped home by Bylinski. But regardless, Miami has a 1-0 lead with 15. 18 left here in the first. That's a tough break. Uh, ben Rafferty, good position on the two on one. Uh, it looks like he got his stick on it, and then the redirection combination with the bouncing puck seemed to just get by Drago. Looked like it bounced over his, uh, his right pad as he was down on the butterfly, but we'll have to go on with this one as Miami strikes first pretty early on in this contest as they're back inside their own zone with McLaughlin. McLaughlin over to the far side to Jason Abbey. And through center, along the right wing. Miami into the retriever zone, off in the far corner. He swept around the boards over to the near side by Sean Walsh. Not out, kept in up top by McLaughlin. As it goes deep behind the retriever's goal line. And Nick Yost dropping the body back there, but regardless, the Red Hawks still have the puck inside the retriever zone as Walsh is trying to rough up his guys. It goes along the half boards and sticked up high into the air and out by Dan Armstrong all the way down to the Miami zone. No icing. As the retrievers are putting on some pressure here, as Miami will go to the far side, Dan Durante could not keep it inside the zone. The alternate captain working it back to the captain, Nick Yost. He cleared in the zone, and a hard check there on Jean-Luc Durante. And I think that drew a penalty. So the retrievers are gonna go on their first power play. It's a Green Turtle power play. Brought to you by Green Turtle of Owings Mills. Check them out. They're at two Restaurant Park Drive. So stop in and check out their specials or visit their Facebook page on Facebook, of course. Yeah, I got to work on those ad plugs. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, they gave me one for uh, PA system last week, and they write you three paragraphs to try and fit in. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> During a PA announcement, that's, that's not exactly what they want you to do. It's kind of ironic. <laughs> now we have a bit of a... Silence here as we try to figure out how to put a penalty up on the scoreboard. I can go down there and do it. <laughs> I know you're an expert at that stuff. 
I heard Jeff Hamlet's back in the uh, or Hamlet's back in the box there at the yeah, Lexus Town nice. Sports Center. Or Sports Have some yeah. audio technicalty, te- audio difficulties to figure out there. Must be the air up here in the broadcast booth. None of us yeah. can talk straight. I don't know. <laughs> I was never very good orator either. So, ooh, big word. Well oh, done. Seven well done. Well, it you graduated, fancy. didn't you? <laughs> didn't you? No. Oh. Not yet. Uh-oh, and a turnover there. The captain for Miami was right at the right place at the right time. It's held, but he turns it over to Yost. He goes over to O'Connor along the near side. Retrievers looking to set up on his power play. O'Connor sending it in deep. Back behind the cage, trying to work it over to Bloom. Bloom off in the far corner now, sending up top to the point to Yost. Yost back down low, and he finds, I believe that's Tom Snaring down there. And it comes up along the near side, blue line and out. Gets past Nick Yost and goes down into the Retrievers' territory. Yost back to play with 125 left on the Green Turtle power play. And through center now, Matt Bloom. Stopping it up along the near side blue line. Cross ice feed over to O'Connor. Back up top to Yost with a point shot and gets deflected off into the near corner. And Bloom back along the half boards now. And lightly pressured. And Miami does get a hold of it. And they'll try to clear it on their first try. They'll get it on their second try. And Durante, Jean-Luc, has got to be, or I'm sorry, Thomas Nairing's got to be careful there. Getting use of these guys. O'Connor over to Bloom. Bloom trying to kick it to his forehand, but couldn't get the shot away. He has to pass along the half boards over to O'Connor. Back up top to Bloom with 45 seconds left on the power play. Bloom winds up, takes a shot, and it just goes wide of Effinger. O'Connor back behind the cage. Here's Durante up top. Point shot. Bloom blocked by Maybe that was number 17, Matt Kelly, that got in front of that. Well, I'm sorry, I, I get it, these rosters backwards. Mike Oliver. O'Connor, back down for Bloom, to the front. And Dan Durante couldn't connect on that one. Miami got 25 seconds here to kill as they come back almost on a two-on-one here. Zach Keefe with it, and a pass over and a one-time shot. It goes just wide. Rebound came up front and off the far end. Oh, and a great save by Drago as he got a hold of that one. It's Brian Davis with the shot. So it comes out into the slot. Nobody has clear possession of it. We're going to go back to five-a-side hockey as Dan Durante gets it out up along the right wing over to Tracy. And now we have a delayed offside called, and we're going to stoppage with 12-18 left here in the first one nothing Miami. What a scrum up in front of the uh, retrievers net there. That's a power play, sir. That was a power play. Well, power play last week featured Justin Freistat, who went down with an ankle injury. Uh, in the second Siena game. So the new unit with looks like Nairing on the first line hasn't had a whole lot of time to work it out. Looks like we have a hand pass. Well, I know this referee. He does my men's league games. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, a small referee pool, huh? Apparently. Yeah. 12-10 left here in the first. One nothing Miami. He always yells at me to skate faster, and I can't do it. Uh, you're in the wrong league, buddy. <laughs> back to Drago, and Rafferty's back there to pick it up. There's 12 minutes left here in the first. one nothing Miami. So it comes through neutral. Off along the far side. Picked up by DJ Fadler, and he dumps that one in. A lot of chirping there. I looked down for one second, Hoppy. Well, I nearly got flipped into the bench. Ah, the DJ Fadler... I saw him play last year for the Washington Junior Nationals. So he, he turned it up at the end of the season. Now across the line, it's Novielli off along the far corner. Novielli down low, turns it over. Miami trying to walk it out. Nice work there. I can't tell who that is. Zach Tracy. Yeah, Zach Tracy doing a fine job there of covering the man. The Retrievers get some fresh legs out on the ice. I wish they would play it off in the far end of this ring because I can't tell what's going on down here. Oh, and that was an interference call that was missed there. Brandon Fritz getting roughed up there as the shot goes right in on Effinger. And he'll hold on. Now, Fritz was nowhere near that puck, and he just got tossed onto his keister. Kind of hard to do. He's a pretty strong skater. Mm Mm-hmm. Not always the brightest bulb in the bunch, but... (laughs) (laughs) The face-off one back up top to the point. Nairing, Andrew Nairing winding up taking a shot, but it was blocked by Miami, and they're going to come back three on two. Up ahead with Torchia. Torchia dropping it off to the far circle, up top to the point to Polacek, who takes a shot and goes wide off along the half boards near side, chasing it as Parizek. We have a tough couple of retrievers players down low. No way, nobody can get their hands on the puck here. It's David Torchia working it back down low over to Parizek. Parizek being pinned up along the boards. Trying to support his Torchia, but both of them are going to have a time there as Fritz banging away at it and 
It will be trapped up along the boards for a stoppage. It was Andrew Nairing that held on long enough. 10.38 left here in the first, one nothing Miami. Things have kind of slowed down at this point. That's yeah. good, that's good. And for those wondering, there's no relation between Andrew Nairing and, and Thomas, Thomas Nairing. Nairing. And I asked about that, and I, they're both from Maryland, are they not? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah New Market and... Uh, Damascus. Damascus, yeah, you're right. Oh, maybe they're cousins? Uh, they just don't know it? No, we'll find well, one out. is bleach blonde hair, the other dark brown. So. Okay, well, that might be a difference. As it's back into the retriever zone along the near side corner, John O'Connor back there to retrieve it, dropping it behind for Nick Yost, who gets popped high in a check there by the captain of Helt. Got him right in the mask. Helt will get the puck, though, and he'll take it off into the far corner, up top to the point, over to Polachek. Polachek sending it down low. Back behind the net, over to the near side. Nick Yost trying to tie up his man to get a hold of the puck. He kicks it free. And Drago is going to reach out and find it along the side of the net. So stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. 9.57 left here in the first one nothing Miami of Ohio. It's traffic slowing here on 95. It was real slow trying to get down here. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Try getting up here on the beltway. <laughs> and alive. Up top, Miami with a shot and gets deflected wide off the stick of Thomas Coy. Who do we decide, who do we decide we're going to give credit to that goal for? Oh, here comes a chance up front. A point shot and a nice save by Drago. Wow, he got that one out of the middle of the air. Off in the far corner, Miami still controlling play inside the retriever zone. It's held sending it up top of the point shot that goes wide by Jason Abbey. Along the near circle, Miami still holding it in the retriever zone. The retrievers are looking for an out here. So they got five guys down low. Plenty of room for the points as it comes up top to McLaughlin with a shot that goes through and Drago makes the save. Near side, it's sent over to Novielli. Novielli trying to move it ahead there. DJ Fadler's chasing, Effinger setting it up. And it's kept in nicely there. This is Zach Tracy will pinch in along the far half boards. Comes over to the near side corner. Sent through center. Nobody there to pick it up except for number two, Cody Selbert. Selbert sent it into the Red Hawks zone. Red Hawks going to walk it back out. So now we're going to have some neutral zone back and forth. And Miami's going to stop that trend and send it right in on a Drago who sets it up for Ben Rafferty. Rafferty, near corner, up along the half boards, along the right wing. And Brandon Fritz couldn't get a hold of it. Miami's going to keep it in there. Miami roughing up Brandon Fritz. He's walking out in front with it is Evan Frank. Couldn't stuff his short side. The net is actually off by an inch there, I believe. Nobody's going to say anything about this. Eight and a half to go here in the first. Yeah, and Drago's going to knock it off completely there, and nobody's going to go there to address it. Way to get his attention, though. Eight twenty-three left here in the first. One at the Miami. Drago a little upset that that whistle didn't go immediately after the net was knocked off. Well, if it's just knocked off a hair, the ref will try to let the play go. A little bit, unless it becomes a bigger factor. I got a question. Do they even know where the net's supposed to go? Because doesn't it look like that left side's a little shorter than the right side? Eh, Drago's blocking it, so okay. eh, it, looks, it looks a looks little off. Okay. Right down to Effinger, the puck goes from a long distance at the red line, and he opts to hold on as the retrievers come crashing in, and the dogs will get some fresh legs out there on the ice, and the birds will fly in some as well. Face off to the left of Effinger. One nothing Red Hawks, as I said before. As this is David Stearns with Sean Hoppy, a special guest here on CrossIceFeed.com. And we have a player up here doing some camera work, fine camera work, Hunter Nicolette. You'll see his work on the YouTube page. And Miami coming across the line, through to the slot with a shot. Oh, man, that was wide open paradise for Miami, but they just could not bury it home. Zach Keith putting it above the blocker side of Drago as being dumped down there is Brady Kill. As he sent this puck along the near side, goes over to the far side. Sean O'Connor putting it in behind the back, off into the Miami zone, back to chase it. Here's Carnahan. Carnahan along the far side, along the half boards, along the wing, comes over to the near side. Here comes a chance now as Nick Yost cuts that one off. Nicely done there as he got ahead of Zach Keefe, who almost had a chance to split the D. Come in alone. The retriever's still trapped inside their zone. There comes a chance now. Keefe will get it again. He's pretty much one-on-one -on -one as he feeds it back door, trying to bury that home was Downer, or Dower, I beg your pardon. 
It's a point shot, does go through traffic, but gets stopped up at the last second before going on Drago. Miami controlling the puck here. It's along the near circle. Nick Yost is going to get called for something. I don't really know if he did get a wrap on him. We'll find out what the call is, but this one gets deflected to the front. And the dogs are trying to get possession here, so there's a delayed call on Nick Yost. Uh, looks like he got his stick into uh, hey, the hands spun. of the little can opener type move. All right. I'll give it to him. Okay. That wasn't a terrible call. What are they going to call cross check? All right. I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, that one's way off. It's like it's like defaulting to interference if you could, you know? It's call like everything interference. Days. My playing days, you can call me for a penalty. Just call me for the right one. <laughs> Seven minutes left here in the first. A two-minute power play to Miami of Ohio. As the point shot goes just wide. It's a Hilton penalty kill. As now we have some trouble here. I believe the door is not closing. Yeah, Nick Yost is having a troublesome time here. He's saying the door is broken. For an engineering major, he's not figuring out too well. <laughs> You're calling him out? Oh, well, he's wow. an engineering guy. He's gutsy. I hope he doesn't watch this. Comes up top to the blue line. Kept in by Miami as they set up shop in the umbrella here for the power play. 145 left on the power play for Miami of Ohio. And Hilton penalty kills. A point shot gets blocked up nicely up front. Getting in front of that shot was Brandon Fritz. The top near blue line. It's Hirschman over to the near half boards. Over to Coy. Down low to Helt. Cycling it up top. And Hirschman winds up, takes a shot, and it just goes wide. Along the far half boards with it now. Miami still controlling it with McLaughlin. McLaughlin moving along the far circle with a side angle shot, low percentage shot taken by Brent Bylinski. Are we suspecting he got that goal? Did he get credit for that goal? If he was the one who shot the puck or tried to pass it originally, then yes. Yes, I think he did get credit for it. Okay. So Bylinski has the goal in this one. 6.17 left here in the first. 1.16 left on Nick Yost's penalty. And a nice clear down the length of the ice. That one goes off the stick of Colin Devlin. Effinger setting it up. He's got Sean O'Connor aggressive down there, mm -hmm. making Miami a little uneasy as they rush to get out of the zone with Helt along the right wing. Helt going to end to end here. Goes behind Drago along the near corner. Sends the puck up top to Hirschman. Hirschman looking for a lane. Winds up, takes a shot, goes wide. The rebound comes up front. Nobody can bury it home for Miami. Is trying to walk away with it. As Devlin, it looked like either he lost his footing or he got his feet poked out from underneath him. But regardless, Sean O'Connor forces Miami to turn this one over into the neutral zone. As it's Matt Bloom with it now, chasing it down. And just going to get there first off in the far corner of the Miami zone. Kevin McLaughlin setting up shop in this last rush. 30 seconds left. Is nicely done there. Stopping it up with Zach Tracy. Zach Tracy getting pinned up along the boards. Miami will find another option to come out with as it comes along the near side. Over to Brian Davis. Davis along the near circle. Sending it up top to the point and getting there just in the nick of time is Jason Abbey, who deeks out. There's Tracy moving it down low and it comes back up top to the point to Berger. Berger winds up, takes a shot, doesn't get it through the traffic as it comes out in the slot for Rafferty who backhands it out into the neutral territory as we're back to five-a-side hockey with five minutes to play here in the first one nothing Miami. This one goes floating on to Drago and he holds on for the stoppage. Faceoff coming up to his left. Coach Vogelai, well, he's kept most of his roster here from last year and well, for the most part, maybe halfway, yeah. You know. There wasn't much roster to keep around after the end of last year. That's true, yeah. Oof, you're, you're a harsh critic, huh? I am. Man, I don't see Bubba Vaughn in here. Oh. I'm still playing him on Words with Friends, by the way. Uh, is he any good? Yeah, he is good. Okay. Words with Friends and, uh, you know, the other ones. Miami controlling the play, five-a-side hockey. This one goes off in the air. Corner as the shot went way wide. Up the stick of Jason Abbey as this one's down below the goal line. Brad Annis with it. Trying to get around a few dogs, but they'll have to opt to send it over to Jason Abbey with a point shot. The rebound. What a great save by Drago. Two chances there for Miami. And he just stonewalls them both. It's a side angle shot. They score. Stuffing it home was David Torchia down low. Short side. Five hole. Uh, five hole or short side? I can't tell which one it was, uh, but somehow it made it five play. hole. Yeah, he did get a five hole. Okay. Drago tried to make that diving Man. save across. He lost his stick, and no one gave him one. He couldn't get back his other one, so he didn't have anything really to help protect him. Well, David Torchia makes it two to nothing, Miami. 
4.13 left here in the first. Well, plenty of hockey to play. Retrievers, though, they look like they're trapped inside their own zone. It's just they can't find an out. Goes off into the Miami zone. But they're well established here to set it up on a breakout, but they turn it over at the blue line for just a second. Nick Yost having trouble with it as it goes behind his back. Sean O'Connor trying to set it up for Bloom, but he has his pocket pick. Up along the near side, trying to chase it down Dan Durante, but it'll be Sean O'Connor that'll find it through the neutral zone into Miami territory. Taking a shot to the front, trying to set up Bloom on a one-time, but it goes wide. Miami trying to clear it out. The Retrievers do have control. Nick Yost walking up, takes a shot. Evanger makes a glove save. The rebound comes over to the near side to Bloom. Bloom to the front, and it's bobbled off. It doesn't land on net, but here comes another try and a side angle shot by Nick Yost. Goes wide and out into the neutral zone. Popped back in by Colin Devlin. We'll get some fresh legs out there for Retrievers on a great rush there. And now Miami's going to come back the other way. And with it now is Frank. Evan Frank off in the far corner. Dan Durante is counterpart there. The number nine will take it away and left it high and into the air over to the near side and into Miami territory. And it backhanded through to the net, but it's not making it to Effinger. Is moving along. It nicely done here as a backhand shot. The Retrievers picking the pockets of the Red Hawks now. They'll set up up top with Selbert, who tries to loft one through. Effinger's going to find this one off on the far side of the net, and he'll fall down onto it and hold on for a stoppage with 2.52 left here in the first. 2-0 Miami. It's the first real pressure UMBC's gotten in their, in their uh, attacking zone down here. A lot of nice plays, get the puck in deep, a couple of pinches in, maybe a little bit too passive on the four check to start off, allowing Ma Miami a little too much speed. But uh, minor adjustments, nothing too hard to fix and get some good pressure on. Off along the near side, Miami finds the top of the glass and sends it out into the neutral zone. Gaining some steam here is Bylinski. Bylinski sending it to the front, getting around Silbert. Nobody there to connect with it. So he's trying to send up to Helt, the captain up front. Bylinski back to Helt. Helt trying to stuff his short side. A rebound shot, they score! Three to nothing Miami. It's Thomas Coy puts in the third goal with 2.27 left here in the first. Miami, man, they're walking away with some some crazy goals is they put a lot of traffic up front with all that activity leaving the dogs running around yeah UBC's collapsing everyone down low and then Miami will send it back up to the point stretch them out just too passive right now UMBC, we know, comes flying at everyone at all times. Pressure, taking away people's time. And right now we're just, looks like we're sitting and watching, waiting for Miami to do something and then react, as opposed to bringing it to Miami as they're doing to us. And Fritz to the front. Evinger makes a save. Chop right down on his hand and quite a reaction here. Fritz is going to have to go find some safe territory on the ice. Maybe even the bench is out Looks of like players. Looks like the penalty bench. Oh, well, that might be the case. He will get called for that slash. And we might get a call against Miami. Is this is this the case? Yeah. They're pointing at the Miami bench. Not sure what they're going to call on Miami here, but they're having a chat. They're calling him for the dive. No? Yeah, they are. I think they are. Nope. Maybe? Yes, they are. Okay. They are calling Evinger for the dive. Wow. So sitting for that penalty is Connor Polachek. Yeah, I think they're giving two on a slash to Fritz and two minutes on a dive to Evinger. <laughs> he did kind of dramatically throw his head back. I mean, yeah. he, we'll give him that. Yeah. So the faceoff will come up to his left since they're offsetting minors. So four aside hockey for the next two minutes. And that'll leave five seconds leading into the second period. So leading out the end of this one. Three nothing Miami right now. Kind of a surprise beginning here to the showcase for the dogs. O'Connor looking for Yost up top. Yost over to the far side, had it deflected, but it'll be picked up by Devlin. And not deep enough as Miami got in front of that one, coming back with an odd man rush the other way. Miami taking a shot, Drago to save the rebound. It's loose up front, what a great stick save by Drago. He was stonewalling Brian Davis in the process. Up top to the point, not out. What a chop there, no call on the slash. 
Who was that masked man? That was Andrew Dower that chopped Yost. Almost broke his twig. 90 seconds left here in the first. Four on four hockey for the next minute 20. I beg your pardon, now it's minute 20. Minute 25 left here in this first. Miami with a commanding 3 0 lead. As the side is open along the near side, Miami entering the retriever zone, dumping it deep behind the goal line. Back to Chase Devlin, gets punched into the boards. Stower was there first. Down there to support Rafferty and O'Connor. O'Connor will find the puck and walk away with it with 105 left here in the first. O'Connor along the right wing. Winds up, takes a shot. Effinger the saves. He steers that one off into the corner easily. Miami picking it up and sent it out over through the center. And the head here for Zach Keefe. Keefe trying to drag it through two. Rafferty found it, but he had a little bit of trouble handling it as he pops it out into the neutral zone. Miami regaining the retriever zone. The shot taken by Evan Frank goes off into the far corner with 30 ticks left here in the first period. And it comes through center again. The Red Hawks are red hot right now as they come back into the retriever zone with a high shot that gets blocked up front. Either Selbert or Rafferty got in front of that one. Back to Chase with 18 ticks left here in the first. Retrievers trapped like dogs. But then they find it out as the Red Hawks will turn it over into the, well actually the backhanded out down the length of the ice with five seconds left here in the first. And we're back to five-a-side hockey, but that'll do it for this first period. Three-nothing score. Miami of Ohio on top of the UNBC Retrievers. Boy, they got a lot to talk about in that dressing room. Well, it's not anything huge. No. Miami's doing to UMBC what UMBC wants to do to Miami. Miami's coming off, going full bore right at UMBC. And UMBC's just not adjusting well to it. Looks like they're sitting back, letting the play come to them, and that's not, frankly, their game and what they need to be doing. As it stands right now, second period just about to get underway. Miami leads UMBC with a score of three to nothing. Poppy, what do you think they said? Uh, what do you think Vogelai said to his crew in the locker room? Well, I had the pleasure of being with him for the entire intermission, so I know he said nothing. Oh, okay. And let the captains hash it out. Nice. I like that strategy. Just stay away from the locker room. Face off one back by Miami and a hard check there. Matt Bloom, and he's going to get tossed in the box for that one. Uh-oh. What is he getting called for on that one? It happened right below me. Maybe boarding? Yep, yeah. boarding. Okay, good call. There you go, ref. It's not a terrible penalty to take. It was a good, hard hit. It was just in a dangerous position. That's why they have to call it. But yeah. there's life in UMBC and that they're not going to go down and just roll over. Well, when comes out 10 seconds in a period and steamrolls a guy. Yeah, you go down it's a, a man. I it's mean, a good uh, sign if they can kill this off and build off that. Let's hope so. But it's a hint that maybe UMBC is going to be UMBC this period. Up along the near side, Brian Davis up top to Berger. Berger dropping it there for Jason Abbey. Down low. Working the cycle back up top. Over to Berger. Over to Abbey. Jason Abbey winds up, takes a shot, and it gets deflected. I believe it went off of Rafferty and wide. Up top to Berger at the blue line. Not out. Still kept in tight at the blue line. Far side. Over to the near side of Berger at the top of the umbrella with a shot that goes through traffic. And Drago will find it, and he'll hold on. Well, no. Loose up front, but the whistle had already gone. As it's kicked off over to the near side, and we'll have a face-off. Over to the left. 128 left on the penalty to Mr. Bloom. We can drop a microphone down there. The penalty box is right below us. I don't know if you want to hear what he says. Nope, I don't nope, know if okay. we can put that on air. Well, I run the show now. We're not we're not for anybody but me now. <laughs> oh, okay, then we can do whatever we want. Man, if I ever called an uncensored broadcast, watch out. If we get enough requests, right? So this one goes off along the far side. It was deflected through. Here comes a backdoor chance along the near side. It was Good play Brian by Armstrong Davis. to come down. Armstrong Take cutting that play it off. away. Yep. It comes you gotta up get out. To the blue go. line and out. Berger back to get it. And then being chased around by Armstrong. Armstrong doing the forechecking on this penalty kill as we have one minute to go on Bloom's penalty. 18.45 left here in the second. 3 0 Miami Red Hawks. Rafferty with a nice little spin around move, trying to clear it out. And a Red Hawks stick went flying as Rafferty did a 
A little clear out attempt, but this one on the second try will go all the way down to Effinger and back to chase it is Kevin McLaughlin. McLaughlin setting up shop. Nice pinch there by O'Connor. So it's off in the far corner. O'Connor trying to kill some time here. Doing a great job as there's 30 seconds left on Bloom's penalty. The Red Hawks still inside their own zone. And a nice cutoff again by O'Connor. Man, he's everywhere you want him to be, and he draws a penalty against Miami. And oh, they're gonna say both of them now? I don't understand what O'Connor did. I think he gave him a shot when they were down. When a guy elbows you in the face, I think you should be given the, the chance to hit him back. I'm not sure if... 21 for a hold. They're calling O'Connor for a hold. Okay. So I guess OC's going to get called on a hold on that play. I, I Did you see a hold? <laughs> no. You said you know this ref. Come on. <laughs> I said he did my men's league games. I didn't say he was any good. <laughs> oh, man. So 18-12 left here in a second. We'll have a four on three for 22 seconds. And um, unfortunately, on the three side is UMBC in this case. So 20 seconds to kill on Bloom's penalty. Miami entering the retriever zone far side with the puck is Baker over to the near side. Carnahan back over to Baker. Far circle up top to the top of the umbrella. Down to Baker with a shot in a slot there. Taken by Bylinski. Goes wide. Helt back up top to Baker. Baker to Helt. Helt far circle trying to walk his way in. Now we're even strength for the next minute 35. Four on four. Helt far circle taking his shot loose in the paint and cleared away by Devlin. Down the length of the ice and this one will go past Avenger for an icing. 17.38 remains here in a second. A little life from the Retrievers, but uh, starting this period off with a kill is never a good way to start a period. Never a great way to start a period, but they did a good job with the kill. A uh, couple chances for Miami, but UMBC did a good job getting a couple sticks in there. Uh, take away the opportunities. Here we go, two on one. And a chance now coming back the other way. It's Tracy. Tracy losing the puck, though, but he'll find it behind him. And he'll send it off into the near corner, trying to hook up with Bloom, but Bloom was not there. And Evan Frank along the near side to Thomas Coy. Coy across the retriever line. Goes down low with a shot. And a stick save by Drago, who held his post, and it's kicked out into the neutral zone. And Miami tagging up, trying to regain the zone, but it's cut off there. Zach Tracy trying to hook up through center. Trying to find his way with a pass to Tyler Nodielli, but... It'll be the Red Hawks regrouping behind their net with 45 seconds left on a four on four. 16.55 left here in the second. Three nothing Red Hawks. Having a red hot start here in this showcase. They're battling hard with these dogs of UNBC. Reminder, next weekend we'll have a call for the Virginia Tech game and the Montclair game up at the Reisterstown Sportsplex. We will have video, hopefully, of that if we can get reliable internet service. And now coming away with it, that's Novielli. Cross over to the far side, far circle, takes a shot and it goes off the side of the net. After may have had a piece on that one. Comes up along the near side for Jason Abbey. Looking cross ice, but he can't hook up with anyone as it goes past Rafferty. They're gonna call no icing on this one as Rafferty's back there to pick it up. Along over to the near side, having trouble handling it as Brady Keel. The Red Hawks will keep it inside. The retriever zone as we're back to five aside hockey. O'Connor tangling with Hirschman as they both left the box. O'Connor trying to find it out of the air, but be taken by Baker and back to Effinger, who opts to hold on with 16.01 left here in the second. 3 0 Red Hawks. You can check us out on Facebook. Cross Ice Feed has a Facebook page. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up, whether or not you like us or not. If you want to correct my grammar at any time, feel free to leave a Facebook post on a wall. That'd be really nice. I need an English teacher to help me out here. Goes off along the near side. O'Connor trying to center it there for Yost. Yost will find it behind the goal line. Over to the far side, far corner. Still with it. Curling to the front with a shot. Goes deflecting wide off into the corner. O'Connor down for Dan Durante. And Matt Bloom centering it up top. Devlin takes a shot. And it's a stoppage up front by Carnahan that dove in front of that one. And it's cleared down the length of the ice to Drago. Drago directing traffic here as he sends it along the far boards. But it's actually intercepted by Parizek. Parizek still with it off in the near corner. Along the half boards, dropping it back behind him to Torchia. Torchia moving it back to Parizek. And it comes up to the point with a long toss that gets caught up by Bloom. 
Bloom getting chopped at, but he'll move the puck out through center. On the back three on two, Bloom in the near circle, cutting in on his back and trying to move it to his forehand, but Effinger poked that one away. Off in the near corner, this one sent up high into the protective netting and out of play. 14.57 left here in the second. Three nothing Miami. David Stearns with Sean Hoppy. Hoppy, you've been with the organization for a number of years. Quite a few. Quite a few. And you still haven't graduated yet? I'm at a different school now. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh. I had to take a step back. Where were you going to tell me this? Oh. Where are you going these days? Uh, Hartford Community College. Hartford Community College. Okay. Golf scholarship. Ah. I couldn't tell by you wearing that hat. Okay. It's a nice hat. I noticed. Miami coming inside the retrieval zone with a shot that just goes wide with a backhand try up front. Setting up shot. And a weird deflection there off the shot from Andrew Dower. Going over the head of Drago. Retrievers are going to try to pick it up. Fritz with a backhand pass. Trying to reach Hannock. But Miami coming back the other way inside the retriever zone with a shot that goes deflecting off in the near corner. And battling away for it. it comes out front. And it's moved away by Selbert. Didn't connect with it. it was Alec Hannock, but Miami will pop it right back in as Ben Rafferty will pick it up far corner. Rafferty being crunched into the boards there by Keith. And it's picked away by Brian Davis for Miami, trying to stuff it along the near side of the net. It actually gets deflected out into the neutral zone. Hirschman, a little bit far side. Or to Berger, who clears that right in on Drago, and he'll hold on to it with 13.58 to play in the second. 3 0 Miami. They have another game tomorrow, and it's against Grand Valley. State University. The Lakers finishing second last year in the Nationals tournament. Down there in Florida. Florida very Gulf good team. Coast. Yeah, they were a very solid team. The year before they won it. Last year they finished second, so tomorrow's a real test for the retrievers. Now they're still trying to battle through this test with Miami. They're down 3 0. Miami controlling the play right now. Back in their own zone. And a hard check there. We had two players crunching one Red Hawk. And comes over to the near corner inside the Red Hawk, or the Retriever zone, I beg your pardon. Trying to free it. We do apologize. We have a bad angle here, but Nick Yost will win out that battle. He'll find the puck, trying to move it out. It looked like, I think it was Zach Tracy who had a stick chopped away from him. And it comes up top to Jason Abbey. Abbey trying to put it through traffic. And finally walking away with it is Fadler. Fadler moving it ahead. But Jason Abbey is there from with it, and he... Tries to move it over to his other defensive partner, but it's the Retrievers controlling it now. Trying to move it up to the front. That is Novielli. Novielli with a side angle try, and that shot was actually taken by Fadler. One wide, Ben Rafferty pinching in, keeping it active. Up front with Fadler with a shot. And they're going to rule that the net was knocked off. And the faceoff will come up to the left of Effinger. UMBC starting to do what Miami's been doing all game. That's just throw everything at the net. Uh, I think it's, it might be all three Miami goals. They throw the puck at the net, crash everyone hard for rebounds. And UMBC's tried to get a more perfect shot, looking for a great pass. And when you're playing teams like this, you can't always get that. You got to throw the puck at the net, get dirty, go bang around and see what happens. And that shift did a good job. Novielli, Fadler, Rafferty, Fadler again, all just throwing it to the net and seeing what they can get out of it. You know, just shoot the puck. It's an old adage, but you know what? Sometimes it works. We'll get you on the scoreboard at the very least as they're being shut out right now. It comes along the near side inside the retriever zone, trying to move it up along the half wall. But they have to go back with the puck as it goes to Selbert. Selbert trying to hook up with Rafferty along the far corner. And Miami will pick it up with Oliver. Oliver moving his way to the front, taking a shot. Drago makes a save, and he'll hold on. A lot of pushing and shoving up front, but cooler heads will prevail, and the faceoff will come up to the right of John Drago. Right there is a prime example. Miami gets the puck on the half boards. First thing they do is take it to the net, get a couple hacks at it. Luckily, Drago is able to smother any rebound that might have come out, so no second chance opportunities. This guy started doing it to them. Faceoff won by Miami with a quick shot off the faceoff going wide. And off the stick of Mike Oliver. Oliver, an active force here for Miami. And, but the Retrievers are going to come back the other way with Bloom. Bloom along the far side. Durante with a shot. Dan Durante puts it up front. Evinger the save. That one was bouncing over his pad, but he somehow found it before it bounced over those Vaughn pads of his. Very consistent on the colors. I mean, he's got the red in the middle of the white pads. They look nice. It's classy, yeah. I haven't really had much. Drago does before. the same thing, though. They have the same pads? Mm -hmm. I think they do. Wow. Everyone's getting a discount from Vaughn. 
Yeah, it's down low inside the Miami zone. Fritz looking to curl it up front, sending it up top to the point. Devlin winds up, takes his shot, and it goes wide. Down to Chase, up into the slot. That's Miami pushing it out through the neutral zone as the Retrievers try to find it. And it's kind of on their own accord that they cleared it out. But it is kept in by the Retrievers after a second effort to keep it, keep it active inside the Red Hawk zone. Miami will break out through center. Moving it ahead is Frank, but they're going to rule that he was offside. Thank goodness they called that offside. It yeah. looks like he had a breakaway. Devlin got caught. Just a little too far forward. Couldn't catch up to him. Figure with Yost, though, all he has to do is play safe and let Yost go. See, so he puts it Yost mode. Oh, yeah. It's real dangerous once it gets into Yost mode. And Yost is off the ice on a change here, but it'll be Selbert that'll put it through center all the way to the length of the ice. They're going to say no icing as it went through a bunch of traffic in the neutral zone with 11 and a half to go here in a second. 3 0 Miami. The Shooters looking for their first goal in this one. And they're coming back the other way. Brad Annis trying to take a shot through. Selbert clears it out and gets popped, but he sets up a great pass ahead here for Tracy. Tracy coming in. Pad saved by Effinger off a Tracy shot. Rebound picked up and sent down into the neutral zone by the Red Hawks, but Rafferty will put it up along the far side. Picked up with a pass to Novielli. Novielli trying to hook up with Tracy, but it'll be Miami coming back the other way with Annis. Annis winds up, takes a shot, and it goes high into the glass and wide. Coming up to the near blue line and not out. Selbert will give it another try. He gets it out into the neutral zone. It's turned over by Fadler, and Miami will go right back into Retriever's territory. Rafferty going down deep. Gets checked from behind, and Miami will get called for this one. So the Retrievers are going to go back on the Green Turtle power play. They haven't seen it in a while. So sitting for, presumably, too, is Brian Davis. And it'll be for boarding. So 10.44 remains here in the second. The second Green Turtle power play here for the Retrievers. The this power play is huge. It you is got huge. You down gotta three get nothing one. halfway through the game. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get all three in this period, but... At least one gets you feeling good going into the third. The short intermission, you don't have to worry about your legs giving out too much. Yep. O'Connor along the half boards near side inside of Miami territory. Back down low for Dan Durante to the front. Over to the opposite side, Yost who tries to take a bad angle shot, but it goes wide. O'Connor along the hash marks near side boards up top to the point to Bloom. Bloom winds up, takes a shot, and it's blocked up front. Good getting in front of that was Thomas Nearing, but another try at it. Well, actually, Miami will find it and send it out in the neutral zone. As it goes off the legs of the linesman, it'll actually help the captain held for Miami, lead it in ever so gently and into the retriever zone. Nick Yost leading the breakout now up along the near side. It's Thomas Nairing trying to move it ahead for Yost, but it'll be the Red Hawks that'll pick it up and send it out into the neutral zone. Not far enough down into the retriever's territory, but it's 110 left here on this Green Turtle power play. 9.50 left here in second. Retrievers looking for their first goal as they're down 3 to nothing. Rafferty trying to find a shot, but he can't find an open lane as he's being shadowed there by Coy. As he has to move it down to Dan Durante over the near side of Sean O'Connor. To the front, and he tried to hook up there with Nairing, and a point shot from Rafferty gets deflected wide. Back up top, Bloom looking for it, sending it down low over to Durante. With the backhand oh. feet to the front, and it just goes wide. It was Thomas Nearing that tried to pop it home glove side as it's back off behind the cage. 35 seconds left on the man advantage. Back up top to Bloom. Bloom down low, trying to get it past a couple of Miami players. But a turnover here and a shot and a save off of a Novielli shot. And this one's cleared down the length of the ice. 20 seconds left on the man advantage. Couple of great opportunities there for the Dogs. Led ahead here now for Jean-Luc Durante. Jean-Luc has it picked away and sent down the length of the ice with 10 seconds left on the man advantage. You might have scored on this power play, but UMBC got a bunch of good chances. Uh-oh. Here comes a shorthanded try as we're back to even strength with 8.43 left here in the second. Miami deep inside Retriever's territory. Got a couple good chances. Get some momentum working for you. Naring had a wide open shot in front of the net, just bounced on him and went over. Here comes another try. It's Baker, Brian Baker, gets absolutely destroyed. That offending party was Jean-Luc Durante. This one goes back into the Miami territory, but it comes back over to Baker, who will send it into the far corner of the retriever zone. So we got some pushing and shoving back behind the play. Now a hard check down low by Selbert. 
He takes out his man, it's Brian Davis. And it'll be let out through center, along, actually the right wing. Still trying to truck it along as Jean-Luc Durante. He stays with it, but well, he's gonna go off in a change here in a moment. And leading it out for Miami is Dower. It's dumped into the near corner. Selber back to chase. Miami getting some fresh legs out there on the ice. Travis Joyle with it. Trying to move it down low. But Miami trying to stuff it along the far side of the net, and the net's knocked off. But the puck is loose, and we'll have a stoppage with 7.37 to play here in a second. 3-0 Miami. Miami, a lot of domination in this game, but the Retrievers saw a lot of life there in the power play. But they do go 0 for 2. Check us out on Facebook. It's Cross Ice Feed. Check out our page. Give us a thumbs up. Tell us we're doing okay. Even, granted, we don't have a full internet connection here to give you the video of the game, but don't worry. If you ever miss a game, go to crossicefeed.com and click on Archives to watch any games you may have missed. And the faceoff will be in the neutral zone. We're having a conversation here. Referee and Miami bench. Not exactly sure what for, but the faceoff will take place. Without anything going on the clock, 7.35 says the clock. We're back to five side hockey. Nobody's in the box. Thank goodness. So used to seeing hockey on Olympic ice down there in Woodbridge, and this is a little different. A lot more condensed. Little, you know, the size does make a difference. Yeah. So it goes back into the retriever zone. Drago setting it up. Going D to D now, back over to Yost. Yost along the far circle. He's getting roughed up, but trying to support there is Fritz. Fritz will take it along the near side. No, he'll go back to Devlin along the far side. It'll be deflected in by Hannock. Hannock going charging in there. And the Retrievers have possession of the puck at the moment. I think it's Fritz down low, or? It's Hannock in the corner, Fritz Hannick. in there in support. Fritz is trying to support it through. Hannock's got it trapped up along the boards in a skate as he's got Jason Abbey on his tail, but finally it's freed away by the Red Hawks and sent out in the neutral zone as Yost tries to pop it right back in. Doesn't get it very far as Miami comes back the other way along the far side on the left wing, and Yost will pick the pocket of Mike Oliver. But then it's turned over back to the Red Hawks, and the Red Hawks will turn it over to Devlin. Devlin on the near side corner up along the half boards. Moving it ahead for Thomas Nairing. Nairing trying to work it up to Devlin, but it's turned over. Miami coming through, taking a shot, deflected out of play, and a hard wrister by Brent Bylinski. And 6.14 says the clock. 3 0, Miami still holding on to that three goal lead. No goals in this period. A far cry different from last 20 minutes before this one. And, uh, you know, the first period, I mean, if you wipe that out, I mean, the Retrievers look like they do have some offensive life to them, but. It's just a consistency. I, I think they got to talk about basics here as they go into the second intermission. UMBC still probably leaving the zone a little too early offensively. Uh, leaving the defense with really no options. Yeah, it's kind of handcuffing them getting the puck yeah. out of the zone. Uh, it's better, not great, but better. Parker well said. Well said. You really know how to compel the audience with Oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding with it. No, it's well said, though. UMBC being taken down on top of the puck here. And a little doggy pile as the faceoff will come outside. Is they going to say that Bloom was the reason why that stoppage uh, occurred? Yeah, he probably brought it under him once he went down. Okay. To look for a play to make. Um. Well, you don't want to kill time. I mean, that's the worst thing you could do at this point. You're down 3 nothing. Time's running out in a second. Dan Durante keeping it in for a second there. But it'll be cleared out into the glass and into the neutral zone by Bylinski. Retrievers trying to put it in deep, but it's caught up by Baker, and we have a delayed offside on the Retrievers. And the Retrievers do get it at the red line and then turn it back over. As it's Baker that'll find it again, or Bylinski, I beg your pardon. Setting it off over to Coy. Coy looking for an option up front, but it goes right into Drago's bread basket, and he holds on. We're stopped with 5.23 left here in a second. Not quite as much work for Drago this period, which is a yeah. probably welcomed reprieve for him. We'll have to see if uh, the timekeeper down there is keeping track of shots. We'll get the first and second period shots after this one runs out. 
It's a point shot taken. Blocker saved by Drago. The rebound drops off in the blue paint, and he'll find it. A rebound shot by the Red Hawks. So that point shot came firing off the stick of Noah Hirschman. The Cleveland Heights native. He's a senior. He's going to talk six foot one. Not a lot of tall guys on this team. A lot of six two, six one. So nothing, nothing to write home about. But uh, no Zidane Charas in the front. No Charas. No. It's unfortunate. I love to see him Charas like players. There comes Novielli along awesome. the far side. Cool. Novielli trying to deke around his man. It's off in the far corner and swept away by the Red Hawks. And over to the near side it goes. It'll be kept active by Fadler, but. You know, Fadler couldn't keep it in much longer as the Red Hawks do clear it out to the red line along the near side boards. They'll be chopped right back in and a hard check there on Nick Yost. And now we're going to have a penalty up here. And I'm not sure if he's calling both or one. Yeah, it appears to be just the one. So sitting for at least two will be Joey Parizek. Yeah, nice polite reminders alongside her. No, Fadler's going to sit for two. Oh boy. So Fadler will sit for two and Parizek for two. So I guess we're going to go four side hockey with 4.50 left in the second. Face off will come up to the left of Alex Effinger. It's not necessarily a bad thing. UMBC's looked pretty good uh, four on four. These odd man situations. A lot of speed on both rosters actually. So see what this yep. uh, latest session Speaking of speed, here comes Hirschman. Hirschman along the backhand with a shot and a save by Drago, and this one goes out of play. A lot of speed from Hirschman as he came along the right wing and cut his way through center. Well done as he put a quality scoring chance in on Drago. So 147 left on the matching minors, 437 left in the second. David Stearns with Sean Hoppy for the cross ice feed crew. Hunter Nicolette on the camera for the archive broadcast footage that will be uploaded tonight or tomorrow, so stay tuned. As the point shot goes in, Drago makes a save. I think he used his head on that one. And trying to move it is Bloom. Cleared up, not out. Selbert tried to clear it out, and the point shot taken. And Polacek goes right on to Drago over his pad, but Miami running the gambit now. But it'll be picked up by Sean O'Connor. Looking along the far side for Selbert. Selbert comes and takes his shot, and it goes right in on the logo of Effinger, and he holds on. I hear goalies are kind of hard to beat there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, unless you have a powerful shot that just tears through skin and muscle and bone. and Oh, man, just, I haven't seen a shot like that in years, <laughs> which means I've seen a shot like that. Ally Afraidy? <laughs> yeah, Ally Afraidy. You know, I had, a, I had a game last weekend where the kid's name, or two weekends ago, his name was Ally Afraidy. I kid you not. Oh, and a hard check there by Silbert. Selbert actually destroys his man. We almost saw kind of the similar thing that we were just talking about on Keith. So Selbert almost buried him. He's backhanded down low by Bloom. Back to get it, O'Connor. O'Connor gets crunched into the boards, and the Red Hawks will have an opportunity here to put it along the dasher now. And Selbert will put it right back in. Cody Selbert being battered around a little bit there. Western New York native. Refreshment. So he's got some time here on this squad. Played his time with the Buffalo Stars as this one's sent up high into the protective netting and out of play. I believe it's Zach Tracy that was the other one that played some junior hockey uh, last year. He was up in Portland. Yep, with junior franchise. Pirates. Yeah, the junior Pirates are now with the Eastern Junior Hockey League as they moved out of the Atlantic Junior Hockey League and uh, they merged up with Green Mountain, I believe it was, or Green Valley or Green Mountain. Sounds right. Yeah. Strong franchise, very strong team now. Up top, Nick Yost, the near side blue line with a shot. Doesn't find a deflection, goes wide into the far corner. Up top of the blue line, long toss does not make its way down. As it was Brady Keel that tried to take that shot through. Keel with it back in his own zone on the far side. Setting up a pass, Fritz almost had a chance for it. But he had a Miami Red Hawks player hot on his tail. That's Brian Baker. Now Drago's going to have to set it up. And this one, I believe, gets deflected out of play and we'll have a stoppage and a face off to the left of John Drago. 3.03 left here in the second period. 3-0 Miami. Still working with those three goals they got in the first period. 12 seconds left on the four on four, mind you. A little open ice hockey. I guess it doesn't really favor the Retrievers in any respect. I mean, they had a couple of chances to break it down into the Red Hawk zone, but nothing coming there. And Miami's doing a good job coming up and taking away those long passes, cross ice that uh, the NBC likes to throw in the neutral zone. Now here comes a chance now for Miami. Walking in with it. Trying to take a shot but being taken out nicely there. It was David Torchia, but now we're back to five-side hockey. 
And across the ice it goes over through the front. Fabler had a chance to put this one on Effinger. And Nick Yost gets taken into Effinger and will have a stoppage as the net goes pretty much all the way to the backboards. 242 remains here in a second and there's a heck of a collision on 95. It was a good play by Fadler. He didn't try, the pass came to him on his backhand as opposed to trying to get a weaker shot off. He tried sending it back over to Tracy. Uh, I got deflected in the Yost pile up. Come flying into the goalie, taking the defense one with you. Face off still inside though, which is a nice. Uh, well, that's definitely nice. Melvielli with it along the far half boards. Melvielli trying to move it around two Red Hawks players, and the Red Hawks will actually move it out through center. And trying to poke it away. Brett Annis though, will try to put it deep in the retriever zone, but it's actually sticked away by the retrievers. He's Devlin though, sends it back to Rafferty. Rafferty up along the far boards, over to Novielli. And through the neutral zone. The chance now for Zach Tracy. Dropping it with a shot taken by DJ Fadler going to Fleck and Wire. Melvielli trying to work for it, but Miami will come back the other way with Parizek. Parizek with a shot that goes wide up along the half boards. And retrievers do get a hold of it here as DJ Fadler. No, DJ has his pocket picked by Annis. This one comes up front and goes airborne. And it's gloved down at the blue line, not out. Kept in with a long shot along the near blue line by Hirschman that goes wide. And a chance now. Tracy setting it up over to Fadler. Fadler backhands it in. She so goes all the way around the horn, and UMBC's going to get some fresh legs out on the ice with 1.35 left here in a second. 3 nothing Red Hawks. As it comes up to the retriever's blue line, Rafferty could not get it passed by Linsky. By Linsky along the half boards, trying to move it around Dan Durante. Durante is going to try to put him into the boards. Try to get some support from O'Connor. O'Connor trying to shovel it along. And the Red Hawks trying to move it deep into the retriever zone. But Rafferty will get it back in the near corner. Rafferty trying to dig around his man, but he gets taken down. And it'll be Andrew Helt, the captain for the Red Hawks. It'll kick it away. And it was Frank that tried to move it to the front. Rafferty still being shadowed. He'll get it along the far half boards. And it'll be sent over to the near side from Bloom over to O'Connor. O'Connor along the left wing with less than a minute to play here in a second. And O'Connor gets taken out in the check and the Red Hawks will take possession of the puck in their own zone, but Bloom's buzzing around in there. There's O'Connor now trying to do some four checking as it's sent over to the near side. Nick Yosa keep it in, winds up, takes a shot, deflected through just wide. Just missing the far side of the net. Devlin putting it deep down over to O'Connor. O'Connor back up top to the point. A little funny bounce there as this one gets deflected high and into the protective netting. And Yost is calling for that faceoff to be to the right of Effinger. I'm yeah, assuming like it will be the case, it. yeah. 28.2 left here in the second. Coach Vogel eyes UMBC Retrievers down three to nothing. A reminder, next weekend we'll have the games between the UMBC Retrievers of Virginia Tech and Montclair State University here on crossicefeed.com. So be sure to tune in. More Red Hawks. More Red Hawks indeed. I remember last two years ago we had Hawks galore. So the net gets knocked off with 14.2 to go. Effinger steered that one aside, but in the process knocked it off. Yeah, what do we have? Like uh, Ice Hawks, Red Hawks. Um, There's another one. Uh, St. Joe's Hawks. St. Joe's Hawks, yep. And it was three in a row that weekend. It was amazing. A lot of hockey. Ah, uh, I see what you did there. It is clever. This one sticked up into the neutral zone, gloved down by Yo, sent down into the Miami zone, and that'll do it for the second period. The Retrievers and the Red Hawks score nothing in this period, but Miami holds on to a three goal lead carried over from the first period. Stay tuned, third period action on the other side. Just a few moments time, you're watching Retrievers Hockey here on Cross Ice Feed. Actually, you're listening to Retrievers Hockey here on crossicefeed.com. Don't go anywhere. On the camera, so third period action. Just about to get underway as Retrievers are down three nothing. Miami wins that face off back. They try to clear it through center. They do get it through to Davis. Davis, the shot, the save, wow. I, I looked down for just a second there and Matt Bloom's in the net. Wow, and uh, okay, a lot of activity up front there. Uh, I'm, I'm not seeing uh, Coach Vogel on the bench. There he goes, here he comes around. Okay, all right, he decided he wants to join his team now. Okay, good. I thought he quit on these guys. You don't quit on your team. Come on now, you're only three games deep in the season. Uh, <laughs> he did have a message this period though. Oh, did he? 
can you actually say it? Here comes a long shot there. Drago makes a save. The point shot came from McLaughlin. Can you? It had something to do with the forwards are leaving the zone quite early, leaving the defense not many options. Okay. So uh, it was either forwards come down low and help, and help out the D, give them options, come out as a group, or send one guy out long and communicate that. This way there's not two guys left in the defensive zone, kind of okay. like right now. So he's talking like a 1-2-2? Two, two. Yeah, that's type thing. Okay. This one goes down the length of the ice. No icing. Effinger out there setting it up along the near boards. Dan Durante with it, sending it down deep. And it's picked up along the far side. O'Connor trying to pick it up. But it's Hirschman that has a trap. But Bloom will find it. Bloom getting pinned up along the boards by Health. Bloom finding a way. Peels away. Goes off into the far corner. Back behind for O'Connor. O'Connor looking. Back over to Bloom. Comes over to Selbert. Far half boards. Sending it over to the near side to O'Connor. O'Connor with the puck now. O'Connor back behind the back over to Dr Dan Durante. Dan Durante trying to center it, but it's interrupted by the Red Hawks, and it looks like they're going to break out. And it's moved ahead by Hirschman. Hirschman with a long toss on to Drago, who steers that one off along the half boards near side. 18 and a half to go here in the third period. 3-0 Miami of Ohio on your UMBC Retrievers. And David Stearns with Sean Hoppy. Retrievers trying to get some zone entry, but they're going to have to retreat back to their blue line as it goes over to the near side of Rafferty. Oh, Rat, what are you doing? He wasn't there. Sends it off into the near corner. Back over to the near corner, I beg your pardon, to Rafferty. Was Brady Keel. And backhanded through center. There's Novielli going to be chasing it now. And Zach Tracy backhands this one in. Goes along the far side boards. A little miscommunication there by Miami as it's kept active by Fadler. Back over to Tracy with a backhand shot that just goes wide. Tracy back to Chase. Now it's going to be Fadler chasing it off into the near corner inside the Miami zone. Fadler's got to keep his hands down as he almost got called for something or another as he came up high on that hit. It's cleared right back in. Retrievers have to tag up and well, they're going to get some fresh legs almost all around here as Miami will come back the other way in the neutral zone with a shot that's deflected on. Drago actually had to work for that save. Goes off into the far corner to Nick Yost, who leads the breakout. Cruz center tried to connect there with Nehring, but Thomas Nehring didn't know it was coming. Here comes a chance now for Miami. Miami with a shot, they score! Look at that, real quick, Mike Oliver. It was an errant shot, I believe it was uh, either Trevor Abbey or Evan Frank. And actually, it was Evan Frank that uh, tried to take that shot. But Mike Oliver found the flubbed shot up front and beat Drago near side with 17. 12 left here in the third period. 4 nothing. Red Hawks. Another one to just throw it to the net. Maybe UMBC D caught puck watching. Usually when you get a deflection off puck like that, it doesn't go right to the other guy's stick. And the Parisic. But yeah. That's right. what happened. No one covering in front. Point blank shots. Point, point blank shots and nobody covering. Drago's left out to dry. He's, he's left out there to he's hanging out there to dry. And he's already made the first save, so you can't expect him to make He's already stopped, what, 28, 29 pucks already. Yeah. yeah. 31 to 17 shots in favor of Miami prior to this period. 1640 left in the third. A point shot. Nice toe save there by Drago. This one's backhanded to the front. A chance there for Brad Annis, but it goes wide. And the Retrievers are going to get it out into Miami territory, but I mean, Miami moving it along here. And in a neutral zone battle. And it's won by the Red Hawks. Coming in along the near side. It's Keith. Keith looking to the slot, trying to hook up with Brian Davis. But he misses the mark completely and it goes out in the neutral zone. Red Hawks dumping it right back in to the retriever zone. Goes back over to Nick Yost. Yost couldn't clear it up along the wing. Here comes a chance now. Almost a one time. We'll bang, bang. Zach Keith putting it towards the net, but it goes wide. All the way out through the neutral zone. And it's Jared Padgett now. And he draws his team offside. 15-47 left here in the third. Retrievers are in a 4-0 hole. Four on those in your defensive zone are not what you uh, want to no. see. Forwards just... They're trying to get forward and get some offense going, but you got to get the puck out of the zone first. And that seems to be the part that they're missing. And we're doing pretty good work along the boards in the offensive zone, but at some point you have to get to the pucks in the net. 
another part that we're having trouble with. And Selberg's shot goes wide with a rebound from Bloom along the near side of the net from behind the net. Gets trapped up by Effinger. What time's tomorrow's game uh, against Grand Valley? 3.15. 3.15. And then Sunday's game is at? 9.15 a.m. 9.15 in the morning. I was way off on that one. So Southern Illinois on Sunday at 9.15. And tomorrow, Grand Valley awaits. Won't be our earliest wake-up wake up call. Practice at 6 a.m. twice a week, so it's not like the guys aren't used to playing hockey at that time. And it's a shot taken by Rafferty going wide. And it's Dan Durante trying to find the puck, but Miami will squeeze it out with help. The captain up through center. Back over to Selbert. Selbert trying to move it through center, but here comes a chance the other way. Red Hawks back inside the Retriever's territory. Now it's, they have a lot of work cut out for them here as there's 14.50 left here in the third. And, and Matt Bloom having a little trouble handling the puck there as it's turned over to Coy. Coy with a backhand shot that goes just wide. Selbert picking up the rebound, far side, over to the near side, trying to get the home run pass over to Dan Durante. And it goes out of his reach for an icing. Well, just like that, 14-39. Third period, faceoff will come back to the left of Drago. Next weekend, homecoming weekend, Virginia Tech and Montclair State University at the Reisterstown Sportsplex in Reisterstown, Maryland. First game at 4.30, and then Sunday at 5.15. Shot taken by Miami, goes wide, kept in by the Hawks. Red Hawks sending it down low over to the far corner. And be picked up by Trevor Abe. And Sean O'Connor will find it. Sending a pass up to Dan Durante. Durante across the red line, off into the near corner, and he'll have to go off on a change. Sean O'Connor down there to chase. The only retriever down low for it. And a late comer, it's DJ Fadler, who slowed it up just for the moment. But the retrievers have to chase back into their own zone as Drago's back there to set it up along the glass. And up to Novielli, but it gets bounced back to Andrew Nering. It comes out through the red line. The red Hawks coming back the other way and a hard check there through center. Giving an opportunity for DJ Fadler. Dropping it over to Novielli with a shot and a save by Effinger. The rebound and it goes up to the net. And a great save there by Effinger who loses his bucket on the play. And he keeps that goose egg up on the UMBC side of the scoreboard. It's probably the best chance UMBC's had all game. I agree. Three on two. It was a good step up by Naring in the neutral zone. Miami's been doing that to UMBC all day and catching them off. Mm -hmm. Even Siena last week was catching UMBC, stepping up in the neutral zone when they weren't expecting it. Uh, created the turnover, three on two. Great shot by Booger, just uh, rang the goalie right there in the uh, old noggin. Mm -hmm. Give him a little wake-up call. And Novielli and Fadler worked great together on that rush coming in. Give him credit for that. Let's see, face off to the right. They're trying to make sure that uh, Effinger's helmet will stay on. And uh, the referee doing a little river dance down low. A face off to the right of Effinger. And it's one back. Manny had it for the moment. Comes up to the point. Yost winds up, takes his shot, and it goes wide into the far corner. Down the chase is Tracy. Comes up along the half board, sent up high into the air and out by the Red Hawks into Retriever's territory. And Nick Yost will chase it down. Coming along the near side. Getting a little speed, putting it up along the near wing. And it was Novielli putting it ahead, trying to hook up a Tracy. And it's off in the near corner. Red Hawks trying to find it out as it comes up to the blue line and out as Yost was on the other side of the line. And as he dumps it right back in, the Retrievers tag up. But the Red Hawks putting it through center. Turnover to Sean O'Connor, putting it ahead for Tracy. Tracy comes in, takes a shot. Effinger, the save. No rebound coming as Dan Durante went crashing in hard. But 13.06 remains on the clock. And 4 0 Miami. The time is running out on the Retrievers. So check us out on Facebook, Cross Ice Feed, like our Facebook page. We'll be back at it again, as I said, next weekend. And I think the weekend after that is a shot taken by the Retrievers, goes wide. And it's Dan Durante trying to keep it active for the Retrievers inside the Red Hawks zone, but the Red Hawks will break out the other way. And nice moves there. That was Zach Keefe trying to move it over to the opposite side along the wing for Dower, but Dower couldn't get the shot through. A point shot taken by Hirschman. Actually gets sticked aside by Drago. And his numbers... I'm sure his save percentage looks pretty decent considering the amount of shots he's seen. The point shot taken goes off the glove and a wraparound stuff attempt 
is stopped by Drago, who held his post the entire way. 12.34 left here in the third. We have four goals that need to be tied up with here. If the Retrievers can put some offense together, they just can't get set up oh. once they're in, but they also can't get out of their own zone. <laughs> that usually helps. You can get out. There's a shot off the post. Zach Keefe's shot goes off in the far corner. Red Hawks controlling it. Inside the retriever zone, up along the far blue line. Hirschman trying to put it in deep. It's caught up along the half boards. Goes airborne. And eventually it's found. And here comes a shot. And deflecting out of play for Brian Davis's snapper that I believe may have gotten a piece of Drago or somebody up front. But regardless, the faceoff will be to the left of Johnny Drago. 12-12 left in the third. UMBC is just giving too much time to these Miami players in the offensive zone. When UMBC gets down low, there's always a Miami body on a UMBC body. In the offensive zone, there's always a Miami body on UMBC once they get the puck. And we're just just letting them have too much time. It might be an intimidation factor. Miami came out hitting pretty hard. Uh, I just don't know what it is. And Miami with a side angle try off along the far circle. Goes off the side of the net and Drago finds it in the blue paint. Underneath there, about five players that were crowded up front. So he's got his eyes down to the ice looking for that thing as it states 11.46 left in the third. Drago trying to keep this deficit to four. Hoping that the offense will pick things up here in a few moments. Or sooner. But the Red Hawks do have the Retrievers trapped in their own zone still. It's cleared up along the glass and out by Zach Tracy, Marriott'sville native. Doesn't have to travel far to practice or games. Being down the street. As that was a, a hook there that was missed. The Red Hawks got away with one there. UMBC trying to clear it out up along the near boards. And Miami diligently shoveling it along as it goes deep into the near corner. And there to chase DJ Fadler trying to squeeze out his man as Nick Yost will find the puck on the far side. Losing control of it. Looked like it was bouncing along on the ice. A little choppy ice surface over there as Yost also lost his footing. Turns it over to the Red Hawks at the blue line. Back in, it's Trevor Abbey. Abbey loses control of it. It's going to be picked up and backhanded around. Nick Yost will have to go back to retrieve it. Same spot. I don't know if there's something up with the ice over there or if it was just a weird circumstance there as this one goes past Effinger and the Retrievers are going to get pegged with an icing. 10.47 remains here in the third. David Stearns with Sean Hoppy and Hunter Nicolette on the camera. CrossIceFeed.com is your one-stop shop for Retrievers and Patriots hockey. We do cover all sides of the spectrum except for senior men's hockey. Maybe I'll show up at one of your games, Hoppy. I don't know. Oh, okay. It'd be I mean, nice. That'd be kind of fun. Make we'll, me feel we'll like I'm in the you show. Up. Yeah, exactly, right? No, I came a year too late to call your name, you know? Oh. I'm sorry. And now coming across the line, it's Oliver. Oliver with a chance there and a save by Drago. This one may have just gone above the cage as it goes off into the far corner of the retriever zone. Tracy trying to clear it up. Kept in at the blue line by Jason Abbey, who puts it through traffic, but it just goes wide. Drago steering it off from the near corner and being crunched up and hit hard with Sean Walsh for the retrievers as the point shot taken by McLaughlin is swallowed up by the glove of Drago. When you look at this game yeah. long term, Ooh. Miami and UMBC are always 2-3, three, 3-4 three, when it comes neck down neck, to yeah. regional rankings. So this one may if come back UMBC to bite them. If goes on to lose this game, that puts them in a hole rankings wise, trying to gain back in front of Miami looking towards regionals, nationals, but that's still 3 4 months away and you never know what's going to happen, but definitely not mm -hmm, a great way to start the year. The Retrievers have to tag up here as they had it inside the Miami zone for a moment. And I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess they did get all the tag ups. I didn't know if they did or not, but this one being gloved out of the air and played with a glove. <laughs> no glove pass called there. Uh, I think it's just a deflection. That off got, the glove. well, still it went off the glove. It's a, it kind of passed it. It's like me taking the puck out of the air with a high stick and playing to myself. It's still a high stick. This one shot over the cage. Miami inside the Retrievers zone again. Yeah, it's Brady Keel taking out his man and creating an opportunity here now for the Retrievers to break out. Ben Rafferty weaving his way through center. Rafferty up at the Miami blue line, dropping the pass, and Bloom couldn't find it. Bloom will find it now. 
Along the half boards, dropping it up top to Rafferty. Over to the near side and over to the far side. And it was Silbert that was just outside the zone as that pass went there. And head contact here was not called. And well, no, they will call it. I can't see. Water Wings is down over here out of my line of sight. And Miami will sit for two as we go on the third Green Turtle power play. And he's complaining. So we're going to get a roughing call against Brad Annis. And Annis is just befuddled that he was actually called for something. But, hey, man, you're on the score sheet. What are you complaining about? Oh, wait, wrong side of the score sheet. 9.08 left here in the third. Retrievers have to get one immediately, practically, on this power play. But it's off in the far circle, down low, trying to find it. Jean-Luc Durante goes behind the net, over to Tracy. Back over to the far half boards. Novielli, who steps in, takes a shot. It does not get past the Red Hawk skates that were in the way, owned by Jimmy Berger. Drago is out to play this one, setting up shot for Rafferty. Rafferty dropping back behind Drago, and he'll lead the breakout with Selbert trailing behind. 8.40 left here in the third. Minute and a half on the man advantage. And it's dumped into the Miami zone. Miami trying to wind up and sending it out. Doesn't get out on the first attempt, but... Second little wraparound throw out by Brian Davis makes it down to Drago, who leaves it there for Rafferty. 1.15 on the man advantage. Retrievers still hunting for their first goal. As they're down 4-0, and it's cleared down the length of the ice again by the Red Hawks into the retriever zone. Rafferty picking it up again, stopping behind Drago, and leaving it there for O'Connor. O'Connor along the right wing, sending it inside the Red Hawks zone. He gets checked, but still skates on. Effinger leaving it there and losing it as it pops its way out front, but it is the Red Hawks that will pick it up, coming back the other way shorthanded with a try here for Bylinski, but Bylinski can't get around Yost, and I think Yost is going to get called for something here. And maybe not. It's not going to be it's gonna be on the back check, so they're going to call interference. So Bloom will sit for two. 7.51 left here in the third. We're going to go four on four for the next 43 seconds. This Matt Bloom will sit for, I believe that's his second penalty in this game. And he is not happy. Does he get to buy his own helmet if he breaks it? Just, just wondering. We have a couple extras at the rink. Oh boy. I hope his head's not too big. This one's clear up to the blue line. Not out. Miami keeping it in. And trying to work it up. Dan Durante finds Sean O'Connor. Shorthanded try for O'Connor across the line. Winds up. Takes a shot. Effinger the save. A rebound dropped up front of Effinger and swept away by McLaughlin. McLaughlin dropping it back behind the net for Jason Avi. Avi being chased down by Dan Durante. Will end up having a back check after forechecking, forcing him out. As it's Jason Avi now taking his shot deflected into the near corner and it'll be picked up by Dan Durante. He'll send it high into the air and into the neutral zone and down into the Red Hawks zone. Chasing it is McLaughlin for the Red Hawks. It is now it's a one minute and 15 second power play for the Red Hawks bring on a Hilton penalty kill. Hilton Garden Inn in Owings Mills. Check it out. If you're going to be in town for any Retrievers games, book your stay at the Hilton Garden Inn. And sent up along the near side, Miami breaking it into the Retriever zone. A cross ice feed and a shot just gets deflected off into the near corner along the half boards, Miami. Set up here quite well with Jimmy Berger up along the near side blue line. Over to the far side. And it's Hirschman. Back over to Berger. Berger takes a shot deflected away by Nick Yost. Kept in and active by the Red Hawks as it comes back up top to Berger. Berger looking for a lane. And he opts to give it over to Hirschman. Hirschman doesn't have a shot either. And he falls and loses the puck in the process. And it's cleared down the length of the ice by a diving Sean O'Connor with 30 seconds to kill on Bloom's penalty. 6.18 left here in the third. Red Hawks still with that commanding 4-0 lead. The Red Hawks trying to break out. Getting in the way of that one nicely was Hannock. Alec Hannock got in the way of that one with his body, but the Red Hawks find it and come back the other way as now Selbert will have to give it another try. Send it down into the Red Hawks zone as Bloom's penalty concludes. 5.50 left here in the third. 4 nothing. Red Hawks, as I keep on saying over and over, just because that's just kind of a shocking storyline. I don't think we saw this coming today. This one sent up high into the air into the far corner of the retriever zone. Selbert chasing. And Rafferty's going to come into support. And it's clear up to the blue line and not out. Red Hawks still with it inside the retriever zone. We're back to five-a-side hockey. And Red Hawks just been the story of the day here with their offense. 
One goal in this period, three in the first. A real quiet kind of second period, but yeah, it's just a commanding play here by the Red Hawks. That's been the story of the day, and this may affect the rankings, as you said, Hoppy, coming up here in the future. And five minutes to play here in the third. Rafferty back in his own zone along the near side. Going to go for a pass for Hannock. We'll dump it in and go off on a change. Back in the near corner inside the Red Hawks zone. Trying to set things up were the dogs, but they just couldn't do it. Now turning and peeling away and killing some time. Brian Baker, he's being back checked quite well there. But Sean O'Connor interrupting things for a second. Brandon Fritz couldn't find the puck. But he does find it on a second try and clears it inside the Red Hawks zone. As time winds down, four and a half to go here in the third. And a hard check there, Bloom and Fritz colliding. I believe the victim of that was Brent Bylinski. Oh, and a hard check here. Being taken out is Brady Keel. Oof. Yeah, it looks like a tripping penalty on that. I think we will get a call. Not sure if it's related to that instance or if it's something along the half boards inside Miami zone. There seems to be a, a pileup. Not sure what the, what the Zebras are going to come out and say. Granted, zebras can't talk, but you know we'll see what we'll see what they have to say. Regardless, let's get the call. Miami's going to the box. It's Captain Helt. So kneeing is the call. So you were in the right market, you know, tripping, kneeing, you know. But that contact with uh, Brady Keel's knee was definitely the uh, the selling point. He's not happy either. And I think he will probably get an additional two or ten. Ten minute misconducts indeed, so that'll do it for him. They need someone else to serve the penalty, I believe. Uh, I think they do. 413 remains here in the third, and he really didn't think that one out. His play will begin. The power play brought to you by Green Turtle. We'll go for a third time, right? Third time's a charm? Yeah. Is it only the third? I think it's the third or the fourth. I, I could be understating myself here. I wasn't taking notes. Oh, boy. Dan Durante has it poked away from him. Kept in at the blue line. No, I actually thought that was in, but they tag up regardless, and the arm goes up with 3.50 to play here in the third, and this one's cleared down the length of the ice. Almost a shorthanded try as that one went off a partition and played its way to Oliver, but Oliver didn't see it coming. But it'll be Bloom leading the breakout along the left wing, over to the far corner, trying on his backhand to put it to the front with a shot, and it just goes wide as Dan Durante who had an open near side of the net. And moving it through along the near side again. Push to the front, loose up front, they score! And the goal count, Thomas Nearing is first of the year. Thomas Nearing gets rid of the goose egg on the UMBC side of the scoreboard on a green turtle power play goal with 3.28 left here in the third. Well, a goal a minute. We could do it, right? <laughs> in theory, it, it, we there, there was a game a couple years ago against Ryder. We scored three or four in a three-minute span or so. Wow. I think I might have that on my <laughs> Ryder's a l not 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 quite Miami, but yeah. Uh, well, that wouldn't happen to be the uh, the game on February 11th, 2011, would it? No, nah, this is still in the Drew Harcher era. Oh, back in the Drew Harcher era. Well. I might have to reach back into my uh, in my memories here because uh, I think I actually called that game. That was I think it was my first make, my first game with UMBC back in the 2000 and uh, 2011 season. It was an away game. I'm not sure if uh, Are you sure you would have seen that. And Miami got another penalty. Oh man! After that, how so could you have so much displeasure of having a four to one lead? And why is there a 10 minute penalty on that? <laughs> I forgive him. I forgive the scorekeeper. So four to or one. Or not so much. But I'm waiting for that five. one to show up. 326 remains here in the third. And there's still a 10-minute penalty up on the board. That's fantastic. You just send him to the locker room at this point. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so an additional two minutes will be up on the board. So uh, we do have the goal coming eventually and we're gonna have the uh, the two minutes that you've identified here no nope, no nope, no more penalty no more penalty oh okay five on five you had me all excited like you're getting another I'm, penalty i'm sorry ah. that's what it looked like 
All right, so Thomas Naren gets a goal for the Retrievers, uh, and that'll just about do it for five-on-five five play, and the Retrievers will go shorthanded as... Uh, Durkee still has eligibility left. Can he get his Durkee stuff on right now? Two. Where is Durkee? Where is Durkee St. Louis? <laughs> Put Durkee out there, have him score five more shorthanded Does Rob Durkee really have one more year left? He, has a he only played like three he only played three? Yeah, oh. but he had, he had okay. transferred in from... Uh, uh, that's right, he came he, in from Lebanon Valley. That's right. I forgot about that. And he still has a year. Yeah. And, uh, well, about regardless. ten more shorthanded goals would have been nice about now. <laughs> oh, man. That's that's something I think these guys are definitely going to miss. Yeah, Turkey and OC. Maybe Craig Fisher. Yeah, a shot from the short side here from Andrew Dower just goes wide. Comes up over to the far blue line to Jimmy Berger. Berger almost turns it over. Oh, Nick Yost will find it in a second try around. Skated around it the first time, but three minutes to play here in the third period. Minute and a half on Selbert's penalty. Four to one, Miami. Will C get there? OC looking to get around his man. Coming around with a side angle shot, takes his shot, and it goes off the side of the net. A lot of complaining. I can't tell which bench that was. They're so vocal at this point. I think that was us. Now, UMBC all on their feet, except for maybe three players resting after their shift as there's one 10 left on the penalty to Selbert. That shot from the point, pad save by Drago as it goes off over to the near side, pushed over to the far corner. And Nick Yost will tee it up and send it up to the blue line and out. Here comes a shorthanded try for Brandon Fritz. Can Fritz get there? Fritz on a shorthanded break, on his back end. There's four here with a shot and a pad save. The rebound on oh, a side angle shot is gloved down. And will we get a penalty shot? No, I think we're just going to get the hooking call. Fritz thought he had it. That was an amazing save by Effinger as it came out mid-air. And his glove down. So a slash will be the call. And it's Jason Abbey. And the coaching staff for Miami is shocked. They're like, he didn't even touch him. Well, that, that's well, what they're claiming. But according I to the rule book, you don't even have to touch him in order to get a slashing penalty. If you, you impede the progress of a breakaway in such a way that it is in illegal motion without checking. That's a penalty shot. That's a penalty shot. Slashing uh, is making a uh, hacking motion. I don't think it's hacking motion. But you don't have to make contact and a Lizzie in order Borden to get a slashing penalty. Fashion. Yes, yes. I, Lizzie Borden and slashing and hockey, they all, all three go together. I think there's a song. So anyway, back over to the far corner inside the Red Hawks zone. The Red Hawks do have it. And sticked up to a clear, but not out. It's actually sticked down by Novielli for a second, but the Red Hawks will play it through in the neutral zone. And back into their own zone to kill some time as there's two minutes left here in the third period. Yeah, 30 seconds until the Retrievers go on an abbreviated power play. And what remains in this period. Drago puts it along the near corner, inside of his own zone, trying to clear up along the boards. It's four on four hockey for the next 15 seconds. The Retrievers really need to get things moving here if they do want to get any more goals on their side of the board. Nothing coming here. Thomas Nering netting the only goal for the Retrievers as Ben Rafferty will break it out now. And he's being shadowed by Coy up his blue line. And Coy goes running into the boards, and Selbert will come back onto the ice. That penalty box door does not know how to close. Minute and 20 left here in the third. Minute on the Green Turtle power play. And Rafferty setting up the pass over to Novielli. Novielli trying to find Bloom. Couldn't get it around the Red Hawks player in his way. Novielli with another chance at it. Down to Bloom. Up top to the point to Yost who winds up. Takes a shot off the ankle of the Red Hawks player. I believe the one in front of that was Frank. And then Bloom back down to Yost. Yost cross ice feed over to Novielli with a shot. It gets deflected. It was a save from Effinger. So it comes over to Yost along the near side blue line. Over to Novielli. I beg your pardon, it's not Novielli. That's actually Tracy. Yost with a couple of chances here. Bloom over to Tracy. Tracy, near side circle, half boards. Tracy looking. And he puts it up top to the umbrella. Over to Yost. Over to the Bloom with a shot that just goes wide. Goes over to the half boards near side with 30 seconds to play here in the third period. 4-1 Miami, but dogs are barking for a goal here to finish this one out. Well, at least two to walk away with. Yost winds up, takes a shot, and a save by Effinger. The rebound, it's loose up front, and Bloom is very disappointed that that whistle went so fast. A 4-2 loss looks better than a 4-1 loss, especially when it comes down to ranking, so hopefully they can land one here with four seconds left on the Green Turtle power play. Faceoff will be coming up to the left of Effinger. What's up, Hoppy? Oh, just another ho-hum rare UMBC loss. A rare one indeed, and maybe this is a sign that I should probably stay away for a little bit. 
Ah, oh, it had nothing to do with it. No, that. I know. Kim Becker greeted me with open arms when he saw me. <laughs> Although maybe. We'll see how the rest of the weekend plays out. Yeah, right. If you guys win the next two, I feel bad for you. And there's a shot that goes off of Dan Durante and up into the glass and not out. Uh, now it does go up for a lead breakaway pass to Jason Abiu who comes in, takes a shot, and it goes wide here as five seconds remain in the third as it comes up ahead for Thomas Naring. Naring couldn't find it, and that'll do it. Four to one is your final score. Miami of Ohio have defeated your UMBC Retrievers. What a woeful loss as a tough contender Miami is. And as you said, Hoppy, before, Miami and UMBC always toggling back and forth in those Southeast rankings. So, next weekend, Virginia Tech, 4.30 Saturday, and 5.15 on Sunday, Montclair. Of course, the homecoming game is Virginia Tech, so tune in here on crossicefeed.com for the live game action. If we have reliable internet there, which I trust we will, we will have video of that game for free. And who doesn't love something that's free? I love stuff that's free. Good, as you should. Well, this has been David Stearns for Cross Ice Feed and UMBC Retrievers Hockey for Hunter Nicoletta on the camera and Sean Hoppy, my color commentator. Good night, everybody. And as always, don't stop believing. Miami defeats UMBC 4-1. to